Hey everyone, it's Gus from Pond My Life Up and in this tutorial I'll be looking at how to set up My Devices Kyen onto the Raspberry Pi. This is a pretty simple process and will give you access to a powerful Internet of Things or also known as IoT software package. If you're a fan of sensors, collecting data and the overall concept of IoT, then this is for you. There are quite a few features and things you're able to do with this software, but to keep things relatively simple and straightforward, I'll just touch on the basics. I'll be looking at doing further projects using this software in the near future. One thing that you might like, especially if you're a beginner, is that you don't need to do any coding to get a project up and running. All you need to do is connect the sensors up correctly. Once done, you can create triggers, events, monitoring widgets, and much more in Cayenne itself. The process of installing Cayenne onto the Raspberry Pi is pretty simple and shouldn't take you too long to get it up and running. You will need to make sure you have Raspbian installed on your Pi. If you're unsure how to do this then be sure to check out my video on setting up Raspbian. So firstly head over to PyMyLifeUp.com and find the tutorial on getting started with Cayenne. And find the link to My Devices Cayenne. Click on the link and it will take you to the sign up page enter the relevant information and then click next. Once you're signed up all you need to do now is register and connect your Pi up to the account you just created. To do this simply copy the two lines shown after you sign up. You'll need to SSH to your Pi and enter these into the terminal. These files are unique for every install so it's best not to copy them from anyone else otherwise the Pi will be hooked to their account. Alternatively, you can download the app and it will be able to automatically locate and install Cayenne onto your Pi. Once you have started the installation process, it will take a few minutes to install onto your Pi. This will vary depending on how fast your internet connection and the type of Pi you're installing it onto. Your web browser or app should automatically update with information on the installation process. Once installed, the dashboard will display and should look something like this. So now that is all done, I'm going to set up a temperature sensor. The sensor that I use is called the DS18B20 and is the same sensor I did a tutorial on not that long ago. Now if you remember the process of setting this up was a little more in depth but Cayenne makes it super simple. All you need to do is set up the circuit and have it connected to the Pi. If you need the full tutorial on how to connect it up, be sure to check out my Raspberry Pi DS18B20 tutorial. You will only need to watch the circuit setup part, which is pretty straightforward. Now when I set this sensor up, it was automatically detected and added to my dashboard, as you can see here. This is pretty cool, however, if you found that yours didn't add automatically, then you will need to add it manually or you can try restarting the Pi. To add it manually, simply do the following. Go to add new in the upper left corner of the dashboard, select device from the drop down box, Find the device, in this case it is DS18B20 temperature sensor. Add all the details for this device, in this case you will need the slave address for the sensor. To get the slave address, enter the following into the Pi's terminal. cd forward slash sys forward slash bus forward slash w1 forward slash devices and then ls. This slave address will look similar to my value 28000007602 FFA. Once entered, press add sensor. The sensor should now be displayed on the dashboard. If you need to customize your sensor, press the cog and it will come up with some options. As you can see, you can view stats and graphs. For example, the temperature sensor can plot in real time and keep historical data too. Now let's add one more device, except this one will be an LED. So go back to add new and then device. In here, search for digital output and select it. Now select your Pi, the widget type, which is button, an icon, which I will select as light and then integrate a GPIO. And finally select the channel which is pin 17. This is the GPIO numbering of the pins. Now select add sensor. You can now turn the GPIO pin high and low from the dashboard and also use it in a trigger. Speaking of triggers, now let's move on to that. 
Triggers in Cayenne are a way to have your Pi react to certain changes on the Pi itself or through a sensor attached to it. This could be something as simple as a temperature exceeding a certain value or your Pi just going offline. As you could imagine, this can be quite powerful in creating smart devices that react to your surroundings or the device's current status. For example, if a room gets too cold, then turn a heater on, or vice versa. The process of adding a trigger is super simple and I will go through the basics of getting a couple set up now. Go to add new in the upper left corner of the dashboard. Select trigger from the drop down box. First name your trigger, I will call mine Too Hot. Now drag and drop your Raspberry Pi from the far left side into the if box. Underneath this, select the temperature sensor and have the checkbox next to temperature above selected. If the device options don't display, then simply refresh the page. Now in the then box, select notification and add an email or your phone number for a text message. You can also add both. Make sure you tick the checkboxes as well. Now click save trigger. It should now be saved and will send you an alert whenever the temperature sensor is over 40 degrees Celsius. You can also drag the Raspberry Pi into the Ven box and have it do many things including controlling output devices. In fact, let's do that now for the LED. So click new trigger in the upper part of the page. Name this trigger, activate LED. Now drag the Pi into the if box and select the temperature sensor again with 40 degrees above Celsius selected. Now drag the Pi into the Ven box Select our digital output and have the checkbox ticked. Now select save trigger. Now whenever the temperature sensor connected to the Pi reports a temperature of above 40 degrees Celsius, it will send an email and turn on the LED. You will also need to add another trigger to turn the LED off when it drops back below 40, but I will leave that for another time. So now let's move on to events. Events is somewhat similar to triggers, but they are time dependent rather than relying on a change in the sensor or the device. Setting up an event is pretty easy and I will quickly go through on how to set up your Pi to restart once a month. Go to add new in the upper left corner of the dashboard, select event from the drop down box. You should now see a screen with a calendar and a pop up called new event. Enter the details of your event, for example, mine is called Restart Monthly, and this will happen on the first of every month at 2am. This will just simply restart my Raspberry Pi. Once you have entered everything, simply press save. You should now be able to see your event on the calendar. Simply click on it if you wish to edit it. As you could imagine, events can be pretty powerful, especially if you need something that is time dependent. I've only just scraped on the surface of events, but as you could imagine, they can be pretty powerful. Now go back to the dashboard by clicking on the Raspberry Pi. The GPIO panel within Raspberry Pi Cayenne allows you to control and alter pins on the Pi. For example, you can turn a pin from being an input to an output and vice versa. You can also turn output pins both hollow and high. As you can see, it also makes for a great reference sheet if you need to refer back to it and see which pins are the ones you need. You can also see devices that are currently assigned to pins. You're also able to see the current status of a pin, for example, an input or output, or low or high. Now head back to overview. I have touched on connecting remotely to the Pi twice before. The first time was via Secure Shell and the second time was via VNC Viewer. If you install Cayenne, you can also remote desktop to your Raspberry Pi through either the web browser or the mobile app. You can do this simply by doing the following. On the dashboard, find the widget that says Commands. Within this widget, click on Remote Access. It will now connect to your Pi and open a new window. If a new window doesn't open, your browser most likely blocked it. Simply allow Cayenne My Devices to open new tabs. Once done, you can control your Pi like as if you were there with it. Now you can access this anywhere in the world where you have access to the Cayenne My Devices website. 
This can be incredibly handy as you could imagine. Now Raspberry Pi Cayenne is relatively new but is already jam packed full of features. I have read of future integrations with a Pi camera and other devices which would open up to some pretty cool projects. As I mentioned earlier I will be looking at doing more with Cayenne in the near future as home automation is something I've been wanting to cover for quite some time now. I hope you've been able to get my devices Cayenne installed onto your Raspberry Pi without any issues. If you do come across any issues, have feedback or anything else, please feel free to leave a comment below or over at PyMyLifeUp.com. Until next time, have a good one. Looking for more Pi projects to do? Check out these 21 awesome Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.